Mediterranean Marina's part four starts at Cartagena and is already heading north away from the latitude of Gibraltar where you can reasonably hope to sunbathe at noon on Christmas Day. Although it did rain here on uh, Christmas Day, but well, you know, today it's lovely. Jib is on a latitude of 36 degrees north and Denia, which is the last marina in this episode, is 39 degrees north, which translates to almost 180 miles and the winter weather starts to deteriorate the further north you go. For those of you who've never spent a winter on the Costa del Sol, which is the same latitude as Gibraltar, it's not like the Caribbean. The average win winter temperature is 13 or 14 degrees with lots of days in the low 20s. There are periods of intense rainfall and flooding is not uncommon. And there are gales, some of which are pretty fierce, like this one off Mallorca last year. At night, it drops to around 10 or 12 degrees, so you need a summer duvet on your bunk. But being in the boat during the winter in the Southern Med beats an English winter most of the time. Cartagena is a Spanish Navy submarine construction base with a big breakwater across the entrance and is a really superb harbour with two marinas. One run, run by the local yacht club and the other by a commercial marina. The Yacht Club Marina, off to port as you enter, is very well organised, but many of the moorings are a bit open to the public, whilst the commercial marina has excellent security. It's probably the better of the two for keeping a boat in full time and leaving to go home for the greater part of the year. To have a permanent berth in the Yacht Club Marina, there is a joining fee of 600 euros, then a monthly fee of 35 euros, and then a fee of 2,340 euros for a 12 metre boat. That makes a grand total of 3,360 euros a year and for that you get to use the swimming pool, the gym, the post restaurant and the canteen. It, it was originally a, a very small friendly little club but it's now pretty upmarket with quite a smart dress code. It's very Spanish with keen sailors and it's very, very family orientated. The fees for a 12 meter boat in the commercial marina are just over 4,000 euros a year. There are laundry facilities as well as showers and so on. The outer mole is used by big cruise liners who disgorge over 2,000 tourists into the main part of the town every few days in summer. And the walking street nearby reflects this tourism. There is a mega supermarket just north of the marina, a taxi back with a shopping load of stuff straight to your boat is about 7 euros, maybe 10 euros. The nearest airport is Alicante, which is around 85 miles away, and a taxi ride will cost you 100 to 150 euros and takes about an hour and a half. Mind you, there's a direct train service between Alicante town and Cartagena town, which takes two to three hours and costs about 20 euros. Spanish trains are pretty luxurious and a taxi at either, uh, either end uh, for 5 or 10 euros makes it quite a bargain. Cartagena has been a major military port forever and the Roman amphitheatre and the other historical sites are well worth a visit. I like the place a lot but for some reason I've never been tempted to live there. Coming out of Cartagena and heading east, I always enjoy the sail along the southern coast towards the Mar Menor. It's possible to keep very close inshore and see something of the land. As you turn north between the islands and the rocks and the mainland, you arrive off Mar Menor and its marina at Tomos Maestria. Now, I must confess, I've never visited either, so, you can't, so I can't really offer an opinion except that sailing around a huge saltwater lake with a maximum depth of four meters and having to go under a lifting bridge never appealed to me. The marina is very Spanish and um, intended, I think, more for Spanish boat owners than for foreigners. It's always pretty full with people taking the cure by covering themselves in the local mud. It's a sort of equivalent of the Bassin de Arcachon in France on the Atlantic coast. It's surrounded by holiday homes. 
just past the headland off Marmanor is a vast fish farm which goes on for a couple of miles. It's not a hazard because it's so big, but it does force you to go in a pretty straight line as you go through it. And there's not a lot of room to tack, so normally I motor. Then, just a little bit north of the farm, is the port of Torreviaca. And despite its reputation for being a bit of a Benidorm for cheap Spanish holidays, it's actually a really nice place. The area is famous for its salt mines, and so to port as you enter the harbour, there's always a great heap of salt waiting to be loaded on the next passing scruffy coaster. Straight ahead is the quite smart commercial marina of Marina Salas, Salt Marina, where a 12 metre berth will cost around 3,900 euros a year. It's a very smart and well-run marina. Uh, it's got a bit of a lift-out area and some facilities around it. Next around the harbour is the fishing port and then the Club Nautico Marina, which is much more like a UK lock yacht club. It's got full-on sailing, um, fishing and regattas. It has an extensive marina and the fee for a 12-metre boat, including all the yacht club membership and so on, is around €3,200 a year. It's closer to the town than the commercial marina and, of course, the yacht club marina is very, very popular. Torrevieja itself is a major British and German holiday resort with packed beaches, but in town, near the port, I've always found it very pleasant. And combined with the fact that the airport at Alicante is only 30-odd kilometres away, and that's about a 50-euro taxi ride, this is a very serious contender for a place to keep your boat permanently in the sun. 30 miles north is Alicante, with its magnificent marina, which is probably one of the safest in Spain. It's so well protected and enclosed by a long, long breakwater and, and then an inner one with a narrow entrance leading into the marina area. It has everything. It's a short taxi ride from the airport. It's surrounded by excellent facilities like chandlers, sail repairs, engineers, rigging shops, and it's in the middle of town. Well, city. Probably the best place in Spain, but before you get too excited, the waiting lists for birth here, for births here are very long. And even visiting just for the night can be problematic, even though the young ladies in the office will usually find you a birth in the end. You'd need to contact the marina office about a birth and what the waiting list is for a boat of your size, but don't hold your breath. The airport is 11 kilometers away and the taxi ride around 20 euros. 30 odd miles north of Alicante is Calpe, which is again a yacht club marina with a brilliant anchorage just outside if you're heading to or from the Balearic Islands. The Calpe Yacht Club is very welcoming and has excellent facilities. It's a proper yacht club and the town around the club is very, very pleasant. Although normally I anchor just outside the yacht club to the east, uh, just under the cliff. When I've spent the night in the marina, it's been a good experience and visiting the town and eating out has been good. There's a haul out area and excellent repair facilities and the restaurant. The nearest airport is Alicante, which is about 70 kilometers away and it'll cost you about 80 euros for a taxi ride. But there is a very big but. Prices rise steeply the closer you get to the Balearic Islands. And the membership for this club, which is what you need to have if you want to have a, tr a permanent berth, is truly expensive. Just to go on the waiting list is 1,800 euros. The waiting list is long, but when you do get off at a place, the entrance fee is 13,000 euros with a deposit of 4,800 euros. And that's before you pay for the marina berth if there's one available. And they really don't need more members. These prices make it pretty unrealistic for the average person unless you live in the area and want to spend um, years being a member of the club. But the anchorage just to the east is superb. During the day it's uh, normally pretty crowded but towards sunset they nearly all leave and you can re-anchor a bit closer inshore if you want to. 
It's a place I normally use as a jumping off point for the Balearic Islands, as it's just 60 miles from there to Ibiza. I'll talk about the Balearic Islands a bit more after I describe the last port in this video, Denia, which is about 20 miles north and just around the headland from Calpe. Denia is a major, major port with a lot of commercial traffic servicing the Balearic Islands. It has ferries, it has cargo ships, uh, and it's very busy. In the southernmost part of the port is a commercial marina where there is a waiting list for berths. Next door to this marina is a super yacht facility where, where boats from 30 meters to 130 meters can be berthed and maintained with a dry lock, with a dry dock and all the facilities that go with this. Many of the Balearic Islands charter yacht companies keep their fleets here in Denia permanently. When someone wants to book a charter out of Minorca, Mallorca, Ibiza and so on, a delivery crew brings a boat to that island for you. It's only a day sail or so away, and berths here are so much cheaper by comparison. The whole place has a bit of a commercial air about it. The uh, town is a bit of a walk away, and when you get there, it doesn't have too much to offer. Both Valencia and Alicante Airport are around 100 kilometers away and going to cost well over 100 euros for the taxi ride. Certainly, there are bars and restaurants around the marina, but they're pretty functional compared to the Costa del Sol. Also, you are now some 200 miles north of the Gibraltar latitude, and the chances of sunbathing on Christmas Day are greatly diminished. Frankly, the main reason for Dernier to exist is uh, to service the Balearic Islands. I'm not going to look in detail at the marinas in the Balearic Islands. I'm just going to try and give you an overview of what it, what it might be like to keep your boat there in a permanent berth, as a permanent base. And the answer to that is very, very expensive and long, long waiting lists for most places in most of the popular resorts. To put my 12 meter boat in a marina for one night in Ibiza is around 100 euros. Sure, I can anchor off in the bay, which is normally what I do, but the disco party boats traverse the anchorage until 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the morning, and it's difficult to sleep with the noise. Most people think about all the calais and romantic anchorages. Well, that's true, but in order to protect the seaweed, the Balearic Island authorities have forbidden the use of anchors and have installed fixed mooring buoys in most places. And you have to book these in advance on an app on your phone and pay 20 to 30 euros a night, depending on the size of the boat. Now that's fine, but in most of the popular places, you need to book at least a week in advance. In winter, flights and ferry transport bases become limited, and because the islands are so tourism-based, most of them uh, close down virtually for the winter. There are places like Mahon in the north of Minorca, which is relatively reasonably priced uh, for berths. You can get one for around seven to 8,000 euros a year for a 12-meter boat, and you can fly in for around 70 euros a year upwards, but not that warm or attractive in winter. To sum up the lyrics, in summer, they are probably twice to three times as crowded as the Solent in the same time, with problems finding berths and anchorages for the night. You're obliged to pick up the previous booked mooring buoy and pay by credit card, because mainly it's against the law to anchor, except in a very few places. Lovely for a holiday charter, but a pretty expensive and crowded place to keep the boat permanently. In the next video, I'm going to look at other Mediterranean islands that are more or less the same latitude as Gibraltar. Um, and therefore, they'll be warm enough to visit in winter as well as summer in order to make the most of your 90 to 180 days Brexit European rules. One of my books is called Cruising Southern Spain and the Costa del Sol, uh, and you can find more details of that um, on my uh, gentlesailing.com site with my other books. It's got, it's got more information about all the marinas. If you feel like subscribing to our channel, well, I'd be grateful as it helps promoting, um, promoting it with YouTube. 
But if you don't, yeah, it really doesn't matter. Anyway, hope you have a great winter. Thank you for watching, if you have. Bye. So far, French Canal Route to the Mediterranean has sold over 2,700 copies. And the, the gentle sailing route to the Mediterranean, that's down the outside coast, has also sold over 1,850 copies so far. If you want a copy of any of my sailing books, then they're available as instant downloads from gentlesailing.com, all one word. Or if you want my articles and descriptions about sailing, uh, you'll find them at michaelbrandt.com.